Hello, this is John with Theology Ed. In this video, we're going to look at predictive programming from the first two Kingsman films. The first Kingsman film was released in 2015, February 13th. It was called Kingsman, The Secret Service. And the second one, the sequel, was released a couple of years later in 2017 in September called Kingsman, The Golden Circle. Of course, we have symbolism here that looks like an eclipse. And the K laying on its side for Kingsman uh, is actually an astrological symbol for the semi-sextile, uh, which is a planetary uh, aspect in astrology. Now, I'm not, an ast not into astrology. I don't buy into astrology at all. But the people who are planning things, who are part of the occult, uh, they do buy into this sort of thing, apparently. And we've seen that in a lot of other places. So it's important for us to be able to identify it sometimes, just to point out what they're doing, sort of expose the evil and so on. But here we have, again, the sun with the semi-sextile sign in here, which is something new for us, right? We already have seen a lot of emphasis on, ecl on eclipses in other places. But I think this is giving us a little bit more information. And we're going to see how that plays into their predictive programming. Uh, I don't know that we're going to be able to fit it onto a timeline very precisely, but it may give us some ideas, actually, about the timeline. I'm not positive. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to look into it. So we got these two films. And let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go through the trailers as well as the films quickly. So here's the first film. We're going to do the trailer first. In the trailer, we have, of course, Eggsy, the protagonist. Then we have uh, the uh, Valentine, the antagonist, so the bad guy. The bad guy, notice in the film, is, well, he is a billionaire, it turns out in the film. Um, he's a billionaire, brilliant man, uh, deals with tech and out, you know, we'll see this in a second. But he, he also, though, although being a billionaire and, and, and in this situation, they've selected a man to dress in, I don't want to call it ghetto attire because I don't know how to describe it uh, in, in a way that, it, it, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. But clearly, your typical billionaire is represented all suited up nicely like a Wall Street type guy, right? It's dressed in that style. Uh, instead, he's wearing hats sort of like you would see among uh, rap artists or whatever, okay? And so there's this, uh, I think, a hint here that we're going to be seeing an uprising in this uh, from black militias or black organizations or whatnot because it says mankind, mankind is the virus and I am the cure. That's him speaking up there. Uh, and so he's the cure. Him, perhaps the film is trying to communicate people like him. Notice also that when he says this, that we're seeing a countdown. In this room, you're in a cave, okay? You're in the underground. You are in a place in the scene where these are the people chosen to escape the slaughter in the world that's going to happen. And what's the countdown in the trailer? 7 5 20. So the 5th of July, 2020. There's your Buck Moon date right there in the trailer. At the time, he says, mankind is the virus, I'm the cure. Uh, you know, that this is what he's talking about in this scene. And they're planning at the end of that countdown to do what? Unleash complete chaos on the world. Okay? And in the trailer, it says, sound, somebody says, sounds like a lot of people are going to die. And he says, do I look like I give him? And he's going to say, give an F. Um, and so... And when they have that, they show the church, a slaughter going on in a church. And we'll talk about that a little more in when we actually look a little close, more closely at the uh, film itself. Um, and then you have riots everywhere, okay, explosions and riots. And that's what you see in the trailer after the 7-5-2020, after the Buck Moon date. Now, it's important that we look at the trailer to get that because... I don't remember seeing this in the film. This scene, this part of the scene, or at least this part of the countdown, if it's in the film, I missed it. I'm not sure that it is. But the fact that they selected this scene is at exactly that point for the trailer is telling. They often use trailers to, to give predictive programming a little more clearly than you'd even see in the film uh, sometimes. We see that with Candyman. We, we haven't even seen the movie for Candyman, but there's plenty of predictive programming in that trailer. And the trailer is designed to contain that. Now, so let's go ahead and continue. So we see there's lots of rioting and uprisings and things like that. That's what comes after the Buck Moon. Now, here we see the film itself. We're going to look at the movie a little more closely. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. But in the film, he goes around, Valentine does, 
convincing very powerful people to become basically a part of his conspiracy to kill off a huge part of the population. And he argues like this with them. Here's where he was trying to persuade someone. He says, when you get, the, when you get a virus, you get a fever. That's the body raising its core temperature to kill the virus. Planet Earth works the same way. Global warming is the fever. Mankind is the virus. We're making our planet sick. A cold is our only hope. If we don't reduce our population ourselves, there's only one of two ways this can go. The host kills the virus, meaning the Earth or the planet kills the people, or the virus kills the host or the overpopulated people, you know, the world with the people, the people actually destroy the planet. Either way, the result is the same. What's that? The people die. Because if the planet's destroyed, they die. And if the planet's not destroyed, uh, but they get killed by the planet, they die. So in either case, they die. So now he's got a justification for going out to kill lots of them. And so he, when he convinces people like this gentleman here to become a part of the conspiracy and be on the inside and to go be safe in their, you know, cave and all that, their bunkers, he gives them an implant. And this implant is a way for him basically to monitor these people to make sure they're complying with the agreement that he and they have made. And turns out that if he activates this because of noncompliance, well, their heads blow up and we'll see this, these firework displays, right? When this, there's a, late, a scene later when everybody's heads are blowing up, who's on the, in, on, in on the conspiracy and it's like fireworks going off. And there's, I think a sort of a 4th of July, um, you know, a, a way of hinting at the 4th of July again with the buck moon, but let's keep going. He then as a part of this conspiracy, what he's going to do is he's going to cause the people to kill each other through making them go crazy, basically, uh, in rage and violence. And he, he has a, uh, he's creating all these SIM cards. He has a, you know, he manufactures them here in this plant. And he goes on TV and announces to the world, he's going to offer free calls, free internet for everyone forever. And so all the people come to get their SIM card and there's huge demand for Valentine SIM cards, long lines, day and night, as free SIM cards are distributed worldwide. And everybody's going to go to get these SIM cards, which SIM cards are going to be used to send out a signal that basically triggers this violent response. In other words, uh, they're going to be using, well, we'll explain a little more. They're going to be using the signal to, from the phones to trigger the violence among the people. And he's going to do a test. And his test case, before he goes live with it globally, is in a church. And so he picks this church in Kentucky. Uh, you know, it's an extremist church and all of that. And the sign out front is America is doomed. So again, we're seeing the symbolism here that America is doomed through the uprisings and the riots and all of that. And also we're going to see a direct assault on the Christians and the Christian community of the church. There can be, there's going to be a slaughter. And so because the Kingsman, the spy agency, is all on top of this, they, they start to catch on to what Valentine is up to, and they have some intelligence that says the church is going to – is somehow important. They send one of their spies to go to the church, and he sits in the church to watch what's going on to see if he can catch on to anything. And the preacher is preaching on and on and on and, uh, you know uh, – uh, they, they represent him as a, you know, really bigoted, uh, unloving extremist and so on. And he sits there after hearing about the, the racist rants from the pastor and the uh, rants against Catholicism and the Jews and against the blacks. And you know, so you get this sort of abortion and you get this you know, going on. He's getting annoyed by it. And. He's getting ready to get up and leave. And she says, hey, where are you going? What's your problem, right? And he says, I'm a Catholic whore currently enjoying Congress out of wedlock with my black Jewish boyfriend who works in a military abortion clinic. So hail Satan and have a lovely afternoon, madam. And he starts to walk out. And as he walks out, Valentine, who is watching through, cam through a camera because he's planning on letting this violence begin, triggering the violence in that church, um, very soon, he's watching to see what's going on to monitor it. Well, 
he and his assistant. And when he sees he's leaving, he says, oh, we got to set this off quickly. And so they turn it on and the phones, and you get the little Valentine logo and the phones are going to be emitting the signal. And as he's walking out, the lady's following him out. Where are you going? This sort of thing. And he turns and he points the gun at her at what time? One, one, nine, zero, zero at one hour, 19 minutes and zero seconds in the film. That is when the gun is pulled on the Christian. Now, immediately we're going to see one of the most violent scenes in film. I don't know. It, it's a very violent scene. Um, it's not the bloodiest or goriest scene. There's a lot of blood and gore, but, it, you know, it, it it is a violent scene because what's going to happen is a slaughter that goes on for over three full minutes, three minutes and 20 seconds of just seeing these people kill each other. And it he shoots, of course, he shoots her first. And then the whole church erupts in violence. He shoots this guy. And he just goes around, you know, shooting and killing people in lots of different ways until this is your last victim that he drives the stake through the head as he walks off at one minute, 22 seconds, and, or 22 minutes, one hour, 22 minutes, and 20 seconds. In other words, uh, that was three minutes and 22 seconds. Tw <laughs> I'm so terrible at this. Ah, three minutes and 20 seconds <laughs> of, uh, of just a slaughter. You see, everybody's dead. Dead in lots of different ways, and everybody was killing each other. But he's, of course, the most skilled because he's a spy, and he he slaughtered a huge number of people. And he goes out of the church, and he's going to get killed by Valentine, who comes to meet him because you know he thought he was going to have that guy dead too. And the Kingsman says to him, he "says I wanted to kill those people. I have no control. You know what did you do?" And he explains, he says, it is a neurological wave that triggers the centers of aggression and switches off inhibitors. And so the story here is about basically what's going to be mass violence among the population with the lead being uh, the what the film with the trailer called uh, the virus, the guy uh Valentine here being a, you know, a, a black man who is dressed sort of rapperish. Okay. And he says, I'm the virus. The people are the, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm the virus and they're going to kill off the people. He's going to be the one responsible for killing off the people. And he's going to do this by way of causing a uprising by violence, riots, protests that have become very violent out of control violent uh, using a neurological wave that triggers the center of aggression and switches off inhibitors. Now, I'm not, I don't know that that's 5G necessarily, but the idea is this is the sort of thing that they're representing. And I've seen this in other films and other predictive pro programming as well, where associated with this change at this time in history is a change that um, where the government uses these sort of, I don't know, radiation, a form of radiation, uh, not, not nuclear radiation, but other forms of radiation like these uh, waves, whether 5G or whatever, uh, to affect people's mental states. And so that's what's going on in this one. And when he's in the cave talking to the people, the people are, you know, they're all mellow sitting down there. They're not having a good time. It looks like they're sort of sad or thinking about what's going on. And he explains this a little more. He says, what the F is wrong with you people? I just want to remind you that today is the day of celebration. We must put aside all thoughts of death. I have a typo there. It, ir irrelevant. All thoughts of death and focus on birth, the birth of a new age. We mustn't mourn those people, those that give their lives today. We should honor their sacrifice and their role in saving the human race. We must put aside doubts and guilt. You are the chosen people. When folks tell their kids the story of Noah's Ark, is Noah the bad guy? And they say, no. Is God the bad guy? No. How about the animals marching two by two? No, of course not. Ha ha. Yeah, that's it. Let's turn those frowns upside down. Eat, drink, and party. And I will see you all in the new age. Okay. And so this is what's going on. 58 minutes and 20 seconds <laughs> before that happens. I guess if you look here, this, this is a countdown. This is just a coincidental that I grabbed it at that exact second. He's talking up there for a little while, 
And so I wouldn't recommend reading too much into um, that time. I just that I could have accidentally gotten any other time as well. So then we go and there's an event that happens where the spy agency activates the those those implants and all these people's heads are blowing up everywhere. So you see they're blowing up there, they're blowing up the table, and it's like a big firework display. And then finally it actually turns, transitions into just showing a firework display, again, giving us our same theme of uh, related to the uh, 4th of July and so on. And of course, when he does trigger it throughout the whole world, even the stadiums, baseball games, everywhere else, you see this violence going on and uh, people killing one another and all around the world. And so that's what the first Kingsman movie is about. It's predictive programming related to the Buck Moon again with the trailer pointing out the uh, 7 5 2020 uh, date, then followed by the riots, uprisings led by um, uh, the way it's presented by the elites. They're going to be blaming them all, blaming it on uh, powerful black uprising and then widespread riots and uprising that are both that, that are race in you know race neutral i mean it can be anybody right this is these the violence going on here related to the neurological wave uh attack is is widespread just people go crazy and just have widespread violence and so that is the plan to bring in a new age so they're going to bring in the new age, slaughter basically a huge part of the world, letting these riots be a big part of it. Okay. Then we go to the trailer for the second film. Now this one is called The Golden Circle. This was released within a month uh, of the uh, Great American Eclipse in the U.S. on August 21st, 2017, which figures in various predictive programming, including The Simpsons one, where it starts with August 21st eclipse, then goes to the annular eclipse in 2020, followed by the first full moon after it. Then you have same sort of sequence in um, IPEC Goat 2, where you have the uh, calendar in the classroom representing 2017 with the, the eclipse depicted on the eye of the August month in 2017. And then you have the 2020 calendar depicted there very clearly with the June 21st annular eclipse again. And so this film is about the golden circle released just after the August 21st, 2017 eclipse, the great American eclipse. And this also has a lot of predictive programming in it. The trailer. So we're in the trailer here. You have this incoming missile, uh, this enemy. I mean, I don't know what to read into this Jimmy seven, five, six B. Uh, you can look into it. I mean, of course, there's a seven five there, but I don't. I don't want to read too much into that because I don't know what anything else means. It could be meaningless. But it pulled up right at the beginning of the trailer, and you know it's front and center. You can't put that string of letter characters uh, out of your mind when you look at because they're huge. They're not placed in a normal place for a license plate number. It's centered on the screen, and it's at the beginning, basically, of the trailer. So. There you have, that's what pulls up. Um, so, you know, it's it's worth looking into. And the fact that there is some five makes you think, well, if we understood it properly, we're probably going to get something else out of it. But I'm not sure. You go ahead and in, investigate people who are great with that sort of thing. And then, but what we do have is a missile attack brought on by, in this, in this case, the antagonist of the second film, uh, a drug dealer named Poppy. Now, she had found out all the locations and names and so on of Kingsmen. And so she sends these missiles to kill them. And out in front of this building, we have the Kingsman sign. There's your eclipse with the K. That is actually the, um, the circle with the K. And that is actually the, an eclipse with a semi sextile sign in it again, and which we're still going to talk about once I get done with these, uh, uh, trailers and films. And so the missile goes directly to that and hits the eclipse semi-sextile and there it is and it blows it to smithereens i mean it, it puts a huge hole in the earth and swallows up that whole building and everything right so there's the building this this creates an enormous crater and swallows it all the way down in it like just falls in and with that in the trailer of course we, we hear the the um 
you know, the famous song, I did it my way. And, but it starts with, right at the scene with, and now the end is near. And so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case of which I'm certain for what is a man? What has he got? If not himself, then he is not. The record shows I took the blows and did it my way. And so that's when we see the attack directly on the eclipse semi-sextile direct hit. You know, they didn't hit the building. They directly hit the, <laughs> the symbol, okay? It swallows up the building, and then it says, and now the end is near. So when there's the attack on the eclipse semi-sextile sign. Now, let's look at the film. What's actually going on? There is a basically a drug cartel or gang, I don't know, called the Golden Circle. And everyone in the in the gang gets the golden circle tattoo, uh, which is actually gold in it. And so they have the golden cir circle, which you get the annular eclipse, right? A, a ring of fire eclipse, uh, clearly uh, related to this. So, so this is all again, we're getting our eclipse talk here, our eclipse symbolism here. Now, the, what's going on is she leads a drug cartel, but has to hide out somewhere in you know, South America. And she wants to come out of hiding. She wants her business and industry normalized. She wants to be recognized for her accomplishments as a great CEO who's having a, running a very successful enterprise and all of this. And so she hacks into televisions around the world or the U.S., but focuses her attention on the president of the United States because she says he's more powerful and uh, more likely to act than, I, I don't know, the U.N. or whoever she picked. That's the alternative. And so she talks directly to the president and she makes a demand. What she had done is she had poisoned her own drug stock, you know, her own you know, the drugs that she was distributing. Uh, and people who got that, those drugs were going to have a blue rash followed by going into mania. They go crazy. They start dancing around. They do crazy stuff. And then they go, become paralyzed and then bleed out and die. Okay. And that is what happens in the with this drug um, or this uh, virus that they get through the uh, drugs that she distributes. Now, why would she do that to her own uh, drugs, you think? Well, because she's got antidote, and she's only going to release the antidote once her demands are met. So it's the world's largest hostage, hostage situation uh, of all time. And, of course, the president is supposed to respond by saying, oh, no, you know, millions of people, maybe hundreds of millions who are going to die around the world – uh, I need to act. I'm going to change the laws. I'm going to legalize uh, drug possession, sales, distribution, all of that, regulate it in a better way and, and meet her demands to save lives. But instead, he says, all right, I'm finally going to win the war on drugs. Let's pretend like we're going to meet her demands and do what we can to get the uh, antidote. But really... Instead of doing that, <laughs> let's have them all. Let's let them all die. He says we will finally have eliminated the drug problem. The only people who are going to die in this are criminals, anyways. And so, what he does is again. Here's your your roughly right after the one minute, one hour, nineteen minute mark again. He orders. He says, uh, well, he orders martial law. He says, commandeer stadiums, schools, and other places. And he says, get the military to round up all the infected junkies to die there. He wants them to be hauled off, tell the population around the world and around the United States that isn't infected, that we're trying to save them, we're trying to get this done as quickly as possible. We don't want anybody to die and all of that. But his plan all along is to let the virus kill them in confinement once they're hauled off to camps or to uh, locations set aside, according to the plan, uh, for holding all of the infected. And instead of taking them in there to get them treated properly, what do we get? All the people, a lot of you are voluntarily going in, like, oh, I'm infected, let's go get taken care of. And they're going in like suckers. They think they're going in there where they're going to get the antidote quickly as soon as the agreement is reached, when really they're just going in there to be killed off. In fact, once they get in there, they get put in cages, See, he has them all locked up in cages like prisoners so that while they're trapped in there, they're not allowed out anymore. They came in voluntarily. You think they could walk out voluntarily? Nope. They went in, 
and now they're in prison in there, and they're going to stay there till they die of the virus. And that's what every, and then after when it's all said and done, he's going to be able to say, we did everything we could to try to keep to make sure that this wouldn't happen, but they died. It's a horrible thing. Okay. And so that is what it goes on in this film. And he, <laughs> um, well, of course, in the film, he doesn't win. They, they come back and uh, the Kingsman save the day. But now let's look a little bit at this symbol. Okay. What we have here, this is the semi-sextile sign. It looks like that. Yeah. See it? There it is. That's your semi-sextile sign. Uh, the semi-sextile is one planets, I don't know, where is that? Um, 30 degree angles between planets. Okay. Now, it has various different meanings. Um, the one, I'm not going to worry about that right, this, this slide right now. There are, throughout 2020... Uh, a fair number of dates with semi-sextiles uh, events. However, December gets really busy. And I only mention it because December in the calendar and I pet goat two has a crater in the head. and looks like it really gets hit hard. Now the crater in the head, remember what happens when the bomb or the, the missile hits the set, the symbol up top. Well, you get this enormous crater in the building just falls right into it. The um, December 14th, is a solar eclipse and it also is very close to the grand conjunction that is when saturn and jupiter are in a, a con are in a conjunction on december 21st over here december 21st and that same time that they're in a conjunction that's in, in aquarius see here jupiter Zero degrees Aquarius conjunction Saturn. That's a grand conjunction in Aquarius. That's the first time that happens uh, in this new series of, it's hard to explain. I don't know all the details, but basically every few hundred years, these conjunctions move to different sets of signs. And so now it's moving to Aquarius, which is why the event happening on the winter solstice uh, in Aquarius, being a rare conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn doesn't happen super frequently, and it's a very big deal, is often associated with moving into the age of Aquarius, which is, again, related uh, in, in various ways loosely with the entering into the Ian of Horus, which is what IPEC Go 2 is all about. IPEC Go 2 has references both to entering the Ian of uh, Horus and also the age of Aquarius. And so December 21st is related to that. But on December 14th, here's your eclipse, and we have the sun, semi-sextile Pluto in Sagittarius. Okay, so this is an eclipse date that's also a semi-sextile date. The annual eclipse in Ju June 2020, uh, 21st this year was not, sem no, no semi-sextile event. Uh, there was no semi-sextile, uh, I'll say aspects, that were happening uh, or will happen on eclipses in 2021. Okay, so I went through and I checked these. This is the only one, December 14th, that has that in this two-year period. I was having a hard time tracking down data for 2022, 2023. Uh, there was, on the uh, August 21st, 2017 eclipse, that was also one with a semi-sextile. Um, so that's interesting. But there are, these do not happen all the time. December 21st has how many? One, two, three. So it has Mercury with Saturn, semi-sextile, Sun, Saturn, Sun, Jupiter on the grand conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter on the solstice date. Right. So this, again, we've talked about this date before in another uh, video. Uh, again, it... it, it I'm not saying that anything's going to happen specifically on that date. I never do that. I don't know the future any more than anybody else. So, But certainly this, I think, highlights that date is still very important. It's also very close to this uh, eclipse date. And this eclipse date should also sort of stand out to us as an interesting date because it is also an eclipse with semi-sextile uh, semi aspect, Sun, Sun Pluto. Okay? So that symbol could very well be pointing to this eclipse, or at least this month and this series of events. Uh, there are also other semi-sextile dates 
between the annular eclipse on June 21st, 2020 and the end of the year. Uh, and I'm, I'm starting with right now. So it's August 1st. So there, here are the ones that come. I'm not, it's August 1st. Excuse me. It's August 4th. When I made this, it was August 1st. But so I have, uh, you know, August 2nd, 3rd. You see that there are actually some semi-sextiles right now on August 4th. We have one. Um, Mercury with true node. I don't know. I don't, I don't know enough about this uh, astrology and astronomy even to, to explain that. But um, we have August 2nd had some of that. We had August 4th, August 6th again. So August has quite a few right here at the beginning of the month. Then after that, it goes all the way to September, uh, September 2nd. That's the only one in September. Sec uh, in September, they have two dates, the 22nd and 27th of October. Three, well, two dates, but I don't know. Sorry. In November, it looks like only one date. It's semi sextile. That's November 19th. Why I included November 19th and November 21st, I don't know. Um, but I did. So there's your semi sextile, November 19th. And then December, we have one on December 5th. And then after that, it goes crazy right on this period from December 14th to December 21st. So December 14th, you get one. Get one December 16th. You get one December 20th. And you get one, two, three on December 21st, which is obviously a huge date for a lot of other reasons already. And so December 21st stands out as a really interesting uh, date, uh, unlike anything else we see the second half of 2020, even with the semi-sextiles, except December 14th has the eclipse and the semi-sextile, which makes it also uh, an interesting one to look at. Okay, so I, wanna, I just wanted to point that out, that we may have something here that gives us an idea of an attack and the, root, the escalation of things uh, that lead to the camps in December. Because what is, what is, this is, um, the attack is in the second film for the, uh, about the second film. So let me go ahead and take a look here, find that slide. Um, here. So the attack hits that symbol. And it's after this that what happens? It's after this that we start to move into that period where the people start being heading off to the camps. Okay? So that's when that happens. And that is a, in the, the series of movies, that's a year after the Valentine riots. Okay, so you had Valentine riots, everything goes crazy. Uh, then Valentine loses. A year later, all these people uh, are basically held hostage, get this virus, uh, and then are going into the camps voluntarily to get helped, thinking that this is all for their good, uh, where they will then be locked up, no longer permitted to leave, and to, left there to die, to be killed. Uh, by the president. Uh, okay. And so that happens after this attack that appears to be on the date here. So I think the idea maybe would be that you have riots, protests, uprisings, these sorts of things, the first half, or second half of 2020. I'm just speculating here. Okay. Maybe. And then the semi sextile date happens. Maybe that is December 2020, the big crater. Okay, so that'd be the big, uh, yeah, the big crater here. And then after that, it goes into the, the camps. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's the idea. I'm not sure, but I want to make sure this is out there because whether or not, I'm not too worried about the date thing, whether or not that gives us a date or information that's clear about when we'll see a next phase of the attacks, uh, I'm not sure. It may not even be 2020, maybe 2021. Maybe we're supposed to do the whole, uh, or 2022. I haven't even been able to find 2022's aspects uh, where I was able to understand them. Maybe it's, it's, uh, that information is out there, but it's in, <laughs> I'll say it's coded information, not because it's hidden from people who understand what's going on, but if you aren't expert in astrology stuff or you don't really understand that and read it, 
it gets sort of convoluted and difficult to understand. And so I didn't understand it um, for 2022, 23, and 24. So it'd be interesting to see when we have other solar eclipses associated with the semi-sextiles uh, aspect. And because that may also give us an idea, maybe these this is a, the next phase after a period of the protests and uh, so on. But the point is, even so, what the plan has been and is, the plan is to take advantage of this pandemic virus, uh, perhaps even technology that emits uh, waves uh, that affect the brain, <clears throat> make people go crazy. Even the virus is supposed to make you go crazy it is part of the process um, that ultimately leads to people voluntarily offering themselves up basically to FEMA or the government to take care of them when the government is fully intending on killing you in those camps. That's, that's the big plan right there in the Kingsman films. So, um, all right, like, subscribe, share, blessings. Take care.